Welcome in everybody to another edition of BC Buckets. Today, Colin, we will be going through our big boards, all of the studying that we've done, all of the preparation that we've done, all the countless hours mm. watching these great players in what I consider to be a pretty subpar draft just overall. I don't know about you. Do you feel like it's a good draft or, or no? I feel like it's like a draft with not a lot of stars, but a lot of guys that can contribute. I feel like that's what I was noticing when I was going through. I was like, oh, yeah, this guy can play. Oh, yeah, this guy can play. But I was never like, wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's definitely not those. Like, I was going back and looking through old draft, and I was like, it says, this definitely isn't a Trey Young, Luka Doncic, DeAndre Ayton draft. You know, you right. didn't feel that. Or even Jaron Jackson was in that draft, too. Like, it doesn't feel like that. Not even a last I'll year's just, draft. I mean, yeah, I'd have to think about I don't think about comparing those, but anyways, there is still, a, you know, a top four, you know, consensus top four that could all pop into be all stars. Um, and beyond that, you know, you have some hit or miss guys. So I don't want to say it's a bad draft, but it doesn't feel like the best draft, but regardless it's, we're going to go through our top 30, right? We decided top 30 on our big boards. We're going to go me first. And then you uh, will have the list on the screen as we read through them or if players flashing through as we read through them to help, visually aid this experience so let's get let's get right into it i'll read my 30 off and then you can kind of react and we can go back and forth there uh you know why we ranked players here and there and so on and so forth we covered a lot of these in our past videos so be sure to check those out we just want to have these out so that way you know we're on record here nothing changes at this after this colin so here we go um number one chet holmgren from gonzaga number two Jabari Smith from Auburn. Three, Shaden Sharp, Kentucky. And four, Jaden Ivey, Purdue. Five, Paolo Bencaro, Duke. Six, Keegan Murray from Iowa. Number seven, Benedict Matherin from Arizona. Number eight, Jeremy Sohan from Baylor. Nine, Tari Eason, LSU. Ten, AJ Griffin, Duke. Eleven, Jalen Duran, Memphis. Twelve, Johnny Davis. Wisconsin, 13, Blake Wesley, Notre Dame, 14, Malachi Branham, Ohio State, 15, Ty Ty Washington, Kentucky, 16, Mark Williams, Duke, 17, Jaden Hardy, Ignite, 18, Usman Dang from New Zealand Breakers, 19, Jalen Williams, Santa Clara, 20, Dalen Terry, from Arizona, 21, Marjan Bochamp, Ignite, 21, I'm sorry, 22, Dyson Daniels, G League Ignite, 23, Walker Kessler, Auburn, 24, Justice, Justin Lewis, Marquette, 25, Wendell Moore, Duke, 26, Kendall Brown, Baylor, 27, Bryce McGowan's, Nebraska, 28, David Roddy, Colorado State, 29, Jake LaRavia, Wake Forest, and 30, EJ Liddell, Ohio State. Okay. There's interesting there's there's a few there's a few names in there where i'm like hmm but uh we'll get to that i guess after mine um all right so my one through 30 uh we'll just start paolo bencaro duke uh jaden ivy purdue number three chet holgram gonzaga number four jabari smith at auburn number five shaden start from kentucky number six aj griffin from duke number seven keegan murray from iowa number eight jeremy sohan baylor Number nine, Johnny Davis, Wisconsin. Number 10, Benedict Matherin, Arizona. Number 11, Jalen Duran, Memphis. Number 12, Blake Wesley, Notre Dame. Number 13, Mark Williams, Duke. Number 14, Malachi Branham, Ohio State. Number 15, Dyson Daniels, Ignite. Number 16, Tari Eason, LSU. Number 17, Usman Dang, uh, New Zealand Breakers. Number 18, Oshai Egbaji, Kansas. Number 19, Jalen Williams, Santa Clara. Number 20, Jaden Hardy from the Ignite. Number 21, Ty Ty Washington from Kentucky. Number 22, EJ Liddell from Ohio State. Number 23, Kennedy Chandler, Tennessee. Number 24, Marjan Beauchamp, Ignite. Number 25, Walker Kessler from Auburn. Number 26, Trevor Keels from Duke. Number 27, Bryce McGowan from Nebraska. Number 28, Christian Braun from Kansas. Number 29, Nikola Jovic from uh, Mega BMAX, BMAX, and then Jake Lavaria from Wake Forest as number 30. Let's start at the top because okay. our top four is basically inverted here. You have Paolo Bencaro and Jay Nivey 1 2. I have Chet Holmgren, Jabari Smith 1 2. You have them 3 4. 
I have Shaden Sharp at three and then um, Ivy and then Ben Carroll at five. I have Ben Carroll. So Ben Carroll five and for me and one for you, that's the biggest jump. What is, what has sold you about Ben Carroll over these past few weeks? I just think it's hard to deny his skill set, right? Like I said in an uh, earlier video that he's a jack of all trades, master of none, but the jack of all trades, he's so good at not necessarily great or elite, but he's so good at everything. One, a few of those things are going to end up becoming elite in the NBA. And then his athleticism alone, I think brings it to where that once he gets on an NBA coaching staff, he's going to be able to play defense. I think that that's just a gimme at that point. Um, especially if he goes to a team like the Rockets or something like that, like he's going to end up being the guy and he's going to care more. Um, so I think that that's, that's why he's number one. He's, he's the guy in the draft with the best skill set. And really no holes unless you're saying it's from a lack of effort standpoint. Um, but I think the intangibles and everything is there. I just want to um, say this, and I am I appreciate everything you said. Uh, <laughs> Ket Holmgren, for me, I feel like he's starting to get a little disrespected by, by boards, by front offices. Well, only one front office is the Orlando Magic that are not going to pick him. I, I don't see what people don't see with Chet Holmgren and it's yes, he is a little frail, but what he did, (laughs) what he did at Gonzaga (laughs) this past year is unheard of. It's un unparalleled the way he was able to shoot the ball, the way he was able to create the way he was able to block shots, affect the game in multiple ways. The foul trouble in the Arkansas game is obviously concerning because, you know, maybe he can get in foul trouble in the NBA, but that's a, you know, there's a whole another foul you, you have to work with there, which we don't see guys usually foul out unless if it's Draymond in the finals who did three times. <laughs> um, I just think Chet Holmgren checks way too many boxes here. And I just don't see him. I don't see him failing, honestly. And I, I can understand the Jabari Smith hype and the Paolo Bencaro hype, but None of those players have a higher ceiling than Chet Holmgren, in my opinion. Like, none of them. The The way that he can impact the game in every single area. And let's not even forget, I think he's going to be one of – I think he has the potential – let me correct myself – the potential to be one of the better seven-foot shooters in the NBA. Like, Porzingis is, an, is, a, is a comparison that gets thrown around a lot, but Porz, like this dude should be better than Porzingis comfortably comfortably better than Porzingis and if you're telling me that that's the case that's a multi-year all-star at the very least I would say it's tougher for Chet to get to his ceiling than the other two guys though because of his frame I feel like yes he does so many things well I've obviously on here I have defense finishing three-point shooting handle for his size and then he has you know he can fade away he has a soft touch whatever 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 you want to say but when you have a frame that's like that it's going to be harder to stop guys who are more physical on the offensive end you can only get so far on the perimeter that way. And in the post, especially, you can only get so far. And then not only that, he his handle is good for college, but with his height, if you're trying to have him do what he was doing in college on the ball, it's going to be it's going to be a nightmare for him at first. And I think that yes, he has the highest ceiling, I agree. But I think that I have him more compared to I and one of my comparisons on here is Kristaps. I think that he is more, uh, I guess the word is, is is going to be leaning toward that as a projection, as opposed to like a Pau Gasol or an Evan Mobley with, with ball, uh, with, with shot creation. I think that it's going to be more so like a Kristaps type of guy that's actually able to kind of guard on the perimeter. But it's, we've, again, we've seen it time and time again, guys that don't have the elite skills. And obviously he has a couple of them, but like, that can overcome a frame slash strength issue. Don't make it in the NBA. And I said the last week, uh, Kevin Durant's one of those guys that overcame it. Well, yeah, because he's just a lights out shooter. He's a score pure, you know, just assassin. I don't think Chet Holgram is that type of player. I think he's like a 17 points per game type player who, who throws the ball around, you know, to his teammates. And I don't know if that's necessarily a, a if he was a 17, game. if he's a 17 point per game scorer, let's just say in th- three years, he's a 17 point per game scorer, and he is a I don't I'm not gonna I'm not even gonna say elite. He is a very good defender, like you know, fringe all defense team. 
Okay. Player. I'm not going to say he's defensive player of the year. Like all defense team caliber defender, and he's putting up 17 points per game, and he's shooting the ball at a 36% clip from three. Is that not an all-star? I'm not saying he wouldn't be an all-star. I'm just saying that that's what I could pre- see him in. And Porzingis, the last thing I'll say, I think we can wrap this up here. Por- Porzingis, to me, hit his ceiling in year two, three, four, right? Yeah. He was shooting the ball great, protected the rim in New York, really good. Came over to the, went over to Dallas and um, kind of played off Luca for a bit, but you could tell he was at his ceiling. Well, yeah. He, I mean, the knee injuries also. Yeah. Gonna... The injuries as well. Yeah. Chet Holmgren is super infinitely more skilled than Chris up was coming i agree i agree with that and then for that reason i think he has a higher ceiling but i think a floor of Chris up is very very attainable so that's that's why i think chet holmgren is is the number one uh, pick here i do like jay nevy at two for you um i just couldn't will myself to put him above some of the other players but i do like him at two for you i like him a lot i okay. just have him at three four Four. four. No, three yeah, on my got, four on my list. Four on four, my list. Because you have Shane. Is there anybody on my list that you're you're looking at? Like, oh, that guy's too low or too high. Uh, well, I think Shaden Sharp's too high. But since we already went to the top of the draft, we will uh, we can ignore yeah, that for right now. Um, I think uh, I think, and we kind of both have this. Um, I think Blake Wesley above like a Ty Ty Washington for you is interesting because you liked Ty Ty, so it, it kind of explain that because I mean he's the best point guard in the draft. I'm trying to see where you have Ty Ty. You have Ty Ty at 21. Yeah. Blake Wesley at 12. Yeah. And I have Ty Ty at 15, Blake at 13. Yeah. So you're asking why I have Blake above Ty Ty? Yeah. The the offensive upside, I think, is just way, way higher for Blake Wesley. Now the floor, I think, is lower, but Ty Ty Washington is not he doesn't he's not as smooth. He's not as long, you know, he's just He's gonna have to round out his game as like a more of a point guard type thing, whereas whereas Blake Wesley, I think, can just do it all as like a six five guard. So um, that's the reason. Uh, why do you hate Tari Eason? Why is Tari Eason uh, at like six? I was. On your I, list? He's uh. I, 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 let me see where he's on my list. I, I, I just I just moved him down to sixteen from somewhere. You just uh, moved him down to sixteen. Okay. Like not like not through the video, but like when I, today when I was going through, I was like, yeah, I don't think so. Um, no, I mean, I have him at nine. Yeah, I know. I was going to ask you about that. So for Tari Eason, for me, it's it's a situation of he has the physical attributes and the hustle. And, you know, obviously defensively, he's a defensive stopper. I just don't see the basketball IQ at the next level doing anything for me. I think that that would end up limiting a lot of his game. I think that it's going to be tough for him to be anything other than a defensive stopper. Um, and I don't think you want to be taking a guy like that at nine, uh, you know, when you have so many other options that can defend well and score the ball also below him and take care of the ball, which is also, you know, a big thing for a guy with, with the uh, low IQ um, on the basketball sense. So, I mean, like Malachi Branham, I think that that's a player that, although not as defensively um, adept as Tari Eason, I think that that's a guy where you'd be like, okay, yeah, he can be a three and D at, at worst. Um, Benedict Matherin, obviously you have him above him, but I think that step from seven and nine, is way higher for uh, Benedict Matherin over Tari Eason. I just think that the skill that he has is great for college, but it was also covered up a lot by the fact that college players couldn't capitalize on his mistakes as much, especially on an LSU team that was good anyways. Um, and I think that those those mistakes will get exploited in the NBA. Okay. You have Johnny Davis at nine. I have him at 12. Um, you have Mark Williams at 13. I have him at 16. If you Feel free to stop me at any time here. I'm just going through and reading. Yeah, I'm just uh, we, we got everyone kind of close. I have Dyson oh, Daniels a little bit higher than you. Um I mean, And we, I started we, to come around on Dyson Daniels too. I know I I, I I kind of was too, like going through it, and I was like, Yeah, but like nothing really jumps out for me. Whereas like the guys I have above him, for example. So uh I have Dyson Daniels at oh my goodness. 15. F- thank you, 15. I can't the the list is hard to read from my eyes i'm sorry it's um okay. so 15 I, I but i got like malachi branham above him i got blake wesley above him i got jalen duran and and uh mark williams above him and all these guys are obviously different types of players but they're players that most people have below them just because it's like they have one one skill that goes over like for mark williams and jalen duran it's defense and hustle right whereas they say oh dyson daniels is more like a polished type you know whatever playmaker type yeah. player and it's like i don't believe that he does more for my team in the long run than those two guys. And then Malachi Branham, same type of thing. What do we know about Malachi Branham? He's a scorer and he's a defender. 
Dyson Daniels, he's a playmaker. That's that's all that's all push, his positives are, you know. And I feel like it's back, just tough. I'll push back a little bit on Malachi Branham being a defender. Defender is a strong word. Okay, like, sorry, strong word. When I, I say that, when, if, if I don't say it, the comments will say it. You're right. You're so right. I you're right. I I, he's he has the defensive potential. I should say his, he's he has the quickness to stay with guards, and he has the frame to defend wings. I think that those are the two things. Obviously. He's not a defensive stopper. I just think that it's not like a uh, like an Igbaji where it's just he's only a three point shooter pretty much. Or a even if you go lower, if you want to talk about Bryce McGowan's, who's you know if you want to yeah. call him a scorer, it's nothing. He's not a he's not a he's he's a he's a not a neutral. Zero yeah, he's not a zero on defense. That's that's what I mean. Um, last thing before we move on, are you ready for the? the response in like three years or four years when Dyson Daniels is like an all-star don't see and, it don't they even come see back it. Us never they happening it. it's never happening I, I have promise. him at 22 you have him at 15 and everybody else in the world has him top 10 Colin yeah everybody I did, else but I don't, I don't see it I don't I don't I don't understand I really don't I He's, like if, if we've I talked about him around we've him. talked about him in three videos that's how <laughs> that's how polarizing this guy is for us at least where it's where I just don't understand what he adds like at the next level. He has the playmaking ability. He has, you know, some of the rebounding and defense. Okay. So do, so does so many other players in this draft. I saw a comp. I don't remember where I've, I've watched and read a bunch of things. I yeah. have no clue where I saw this at Boris Diaw. <laughs> that what you want? No, no. Is that is what that, you want? Do you see that? But do you see that? But I, mean, I, I okay, kind of, okay, see but hold on, hold on. I read that, or I, I heard that. I don't remember, but I basically I heard that, and I was like, "Yeah, it makes sense. Why would you draft Boris Diaw with the number seven pick in the NBA draft?" That's what, that's what I mean. Or why would you draft Kyle Anderson with the seven pick in the NBA draft? Exactly, like, that's what all I mean. Of this, he has to be able to shoot the ball at a high level. Tyrese Halliburton is able to shoot the ball at a high level. Shea Gill just Alexander can shoot the ball at a high level. Granted, he's young, and he has a plenty of room to grow, and he's six foot seven at this point, but. I need it. I need him to shoot the ball. I need him to shoot the ball well. Because if not, he's just not going to be uh, as effective as I think people want him to be. Unless if he plays like a three, unless if he's a three, right? But that's a completely different player than what people are drafting him for. Exactly. So, and then not only that, if uh, like I said, the, there's a comparison of him being like a Lonzo type player. Would you still want to draft Lonzo now at number seven? <sighs> that's a good question. I mean, Cause, Lonzo cause I wouldn't. Had, still, still, to me, Lonzo had more pop off the dribble. That's what I mean. Yeah, exactly. He's not. He wasn't as upright. He's yes, he had he was nothing, way more. Sorry, not for nothing. Lonzo in, in college and at UCLA would, could shoot the hell out the ball. I yeah, know he was crazy. Translate initially, but right, he he was crazy. He had he, and his passing. I think was way yeah. better in college. So I mean, there's that. <laughs> um. All right, we got to get off the we got to yeah, get we, off <laughs> the Dyson Daniels train. We got to get off I, the Dyson Daniels train. Um. Let's talk about Bryce McGowan's. Okay. I think that a lot of people have him in like the thirties kind of second rounder, just because of his kind of ball stopping, uh, you know, ability, if we want to call it that. Um, yeah. But I loved his scoring ability. I think that that was, I mean, I, I just think it was, it, he's just a natural scorer. And I think that that's amazing for, for being a freshman. Yeah. We both had him at 27 on our boards, 17 points per game. Obviously the, the field goal percentage is only 40%. Um, but he was a fearless guy who, uh, when he drove the, when he drove the ball, he has catch and shoot potential. Um, I think he just has a lot of tools that will take some refining. But at 27, you know, if he goes late in the first round to any, you know, fill in the blank here uh, to a team that is in playoff contention, I think you give him two years. And at 21, I mean, if he takes the proper steps forward, I don't see why he can't be a microwave scorer at the very least, you know. A guy who can come in and navigate the floor, has long arms, has a really long frame, shot 83% from the free throw line, got to the line six and a half times per game at Nebraska, which Nebraska was god-awful this past year. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you're right. He doesn't play defense, but it's going to take time. I think we see guys like Will Barton. I heard Will Barton, and I was like, that's a great comp. right? There. I have Spencer Dinwiddie as my comp. There you go. I think that's a pretty good, too. So, yeah, I, I like Bryce McGowan's late in the first round. Uh, as at like a 27 range, and I think that's just because the floor on him is a little bit lower than than 
guys I have above him. Well, teams, especially teams that are picking this area, they're not looking for a player to instantly make them better. You're looking for, I think if, if you're picking this late, you need to look for a project player. Um, and I think that he has skills that are just, you know, second to none. I mean, he has, he, he can score like guy, anybody in the draft outside of the top, you know, five, but I think that, like you said, it's just, you got to put him at 27 because every, he's just nothing other than a score. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but I think that it, it bodes well, just the fact that he can score at such a young age. Um, Another guy I want to talk about is Christian Braun. Um, I love I him. I think it's Brown. But Brown. Yes, I love despite him. the way it's the but despite the way it's spelled, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna need his parents to change that. Um, <laughs> but I think that this guy is gonna be in the NBA for a long time. I mean, I think it. I think I. I, did, I don't know why he's so low on a lot of boards. I have him at uh, 29, 28. Um, I just think he's gonna be like a Wes Matthews type guy where he does all the little things as an overachiever. Um, and on top of that, he has, you know, body control. He has some bounce. He can get up. And I think he can guard one through three. Um, and I think the fact that he's a master of none kind of hampers him a bit. But he helped Kansas win a championship. And yeah. I think that that's all, also raises his stock. It, uh, I have down Dante DiVincenzo as a name to, to write down. I think it, like a lot of these players, you know, a lot of, like a lot of these guards late, it comes down to his three point shooting. You know, mm -hmm. if he can shoot the ball at a 38% 38% clip, hell, we saw Grayson Grayson Allen start for the Bucks, obviously with injuries. But I mean, if you can shoot the ball and play a little bit of defense, you can stick in the NBA. And he's six six, you know, which is good. Um, another player, which I, I want to just talk about a couple more players that we've, you know, didn't get to talk to in the talk about in the other videos. Uh well, we did talk about this player, but then we'll get to another one. Ochai Baji, I have <laughs> you have at 18. I have at oh, 31. No. Oh no. 31. And I've I've seen mock drafts that have him going 10, Colin. Okay, 10's way too high. I 10. I think 10. where I have him is perfect just because you can't you can't not buy a shot, right? Um and a lot of teams would take just that, just a shot. You you talked about in the video where you were knocking him. Duncan Robinson, obviously in the playoffs, that doesn't really translate, but you're not looking for a guy to be the leader of your team. He's just there to make threes. And I think that that's okay to draft at, you know, 15 through 20. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he'll definitely go that high. I just don't, don't love him. Um, another player here. what do you think of EJ Liddell? I love EJ Liddell. He's like a, like a Paul Millsap type player to me. This dude, he's got, he got, he's got, he, listen, when you got a six, seven dude, that's 240 pounds. He's got it. I don't know. You know it, it yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I think, I think, <laughs> I think he does a lot of things really well. Obviously, his shooting form is going to be the biggest thing that decides if he's going to be good in the NBA. Um, you know, he kind of throws his arms and legs out. His arc is really shallow, especially if he's contested. And there's obviously he doesn't jump really high. Um, but I think that he does so many things really good, and he grew so much from uh, the, over yeah. the last three years, which is the biggest thing for me, which shows that he's a cerebral player, right? So made huge strides. He punishes defenses, you know, with kickout passes, and he, he has a good feel for for the game. And then he knows how to steal it as man and make defenders pay at his height. And obviously, he's not going to be playing center uh, at the next yeah. level, but I think he can play a kind of a, I mean, like a Paul Millsap type guy. Um, you know, he's rough. He's rough around the edges. He's older. I get it, but I think that he's going to be a better pick than some of the other guys that are lower, like Walker Kessler. I already knocked him. Uh, Kenny Chandler. You know, Marjan Beauchamp. I think that he has a lot of refined skills. That you can't really teach in the NBA. Um, it's just a matter of getting making sure that shot falls. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, uh, you mentioned him. You have Kenny Chandler at twenty three. I have him at thirty seven. That's pretty so, low. There you go. <laughs> that's pretty low. I, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not buying Kenny Chandler. In short, I'm not buying him. Uh, anybody else here? We got. Uh, what do you think of Patrick Baldwin Jr.? That's an interesting name here. He's at 32. He's, yeah. We did, not, we did not mention him. I like, have him at 34. What do you think? About yeah. Him? Like former supposed to be top five pick to. Yes. I actually watched him at EYBL in Dallas a few years ago. Yeah. And I was like. Hey, man, yep. This, this guy's a top five can, pick. <laughs> yeah. 16 can shoot the hell out the ball. And he's like, was just lighting it up. And then he goes to Milwaukee and you're like, okay. And then he got hurt. Yeah. So I think a big part of it is him getting hurt. Um, and unfortunately, it doesn't look like he's getting that athleticism back, which is obviously his biggest thing is he can't drive and finish. He has no first step. And when he's playing against competition, that's not top tier when you're playing at a Milwaukee school. 
that also hurts him. I mean, I think the scoring and shooting potential is there. He obviously still has the step back and side steps. Um, he has good elevation and high release on his shot. And then he also has some, you know, some nice flashy playmaking game. But I think that outside of that, he's slow. It's, you know, you can't be a guy that creates his own shot and is really slow. Um, and then on defense, if you can't defend guys that aren't top tier again, you know, what's that going to, the step up's going to be so much more in the NBA. It's not, it's, you're not going, it's not like going from mid major to D1, I mean, uh, to high major. It's going, you're going to the NBA. And, you know, it's the scoring and shooting potential can only go so far. Um, but I think he's a good project player, you know, and it, that's that's the tough thing. How do you rate that ankle injury he had? Yeah, last last player I have. You can throw one more on in if you want. David Roddy, you have at thirty five. I have at uh, twenty eight. This guy's interesting. He's very interesting. I texted him. I thought you would like him, but I guess you did. I do, but I don't. It's like he does so many things well, but he does them well at college. Colorado and State. I, you know what? You yeah. know what? Yeah, exactly. Colorado State. You know who he compares who, who he makes me reminds me of, and I, they're not the same type of player at all. Oh, Trayvon Mc, uh, Williams or Mick Williams, whatever it was on Purdue. Yeah, Trayvon years Williams. Ago. Trayvon yeah. Williams. Trayvon Williams. That's what it was. Great college player. Really good college player. He's not going to touch the NBA. Didn't touch the NBA. I think well, that that's. He, well, hold on, hold on. Well, he's in this year's draft. He's not going to play in the NBA. He's, he's just not up there. Right, exactly. I think it's the same type of thing. I think the reason he's up so high is because he has way better stats than Travian did. Um, but I think that a guy with his body type is really tough to sell earlier. Now, if he if it gets fixed, if he if you know gets in the gym a little bit, then yeah. But I, I mean, mean, he shot the ball forty four percent from three, Colin. I know I have that right here. Now you know nineteen point two uh, points per game, seven and a half rebounds, three assists, and I saw that three point percentage, hey, and I was man. like, yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna like this guy. But I, it's just a it's tough for me. I love him. I love him. I think this is a year, and I know when we first did this, I hated all the old players. I think I'm trying to like the old players a little bit more. No, you, you don't. Just as role players. It's like, like not like I don't like them high in the draft, but yeah. back into the first before I, I didn't, I hated all of them. Now you give me that, um, you give me like Window Moore, who's not old, he's 20 years old, but uh, you give me like a Walker Kessler 21. Um, let me go down my big board here. I, I do. I don't love Ochai Abaji, but Christian Brown, EJ Liddell, Jake LaRavia. I have all of them right in that area. So it's an interesting spot. Anybody else before we wrap it up? I'm, look, I'm looking at yours one more time. Let's see here. Dalen Terry at 20. What's that about? Yeah, where do you have him? Uh, Where is he on mine? You don't even have him on the list. Oh, I take him off? <laughs> you, you were <laughs> Where would you have him? Uh, I had him. Well, I don't know. I must have got deleted when I was copy and pasting everybody. Don't worry, I had we'll, him we'll at, edit this. We'll edit the. Uh, we'll edit the the, the Photoshop. Yeah, I, I had him at thirty eight. Oh no, we won't. Okay, we will not put him in the Photoshop then. Okay. Yeah. yeah thirty eight. He's, he's not. He's not first round for me. Wow. That's low. <laughs> wow. The Duke can guard. Yeah, but. He can okay. guard. He's long. He's a smart player. I mean, I, I don't love his ceiling, but I think saying that throw him on the the Mavericks, and you're telling me he can't play in two years. I I actually have comparison right here. Dorian Finney Smith. I was going to say, what do you want to be a Dorian Finney Smith? Yeah, Dorian Finney Smith, Trevor Reza type player. I think there's a very very open window for him to slide right into just in the nba nowadays just throw him find him a role throw him on the jazz throw him on the nuggets throw him on a team and i feel like you just you know how i feel about marjan bochamp i'm really high on marjan bochamp yeah. and i have Daniel terry above him so that should tell you what i think about Daniel terry i think he's just a very good um three and d type player i'm a little hesitant because i did say josh green was a good player as well and now he's looking not looking great but yeah we both said it actually i, I actually went through two our, years colin it's only been two I, years i actually went pat, went to our old videos and it was like mavs pick great or get great pick with josh green at 21 or whatever it was so i was like yeah ah, and well. then i also love tail and terry at 31 in the second round when they picked him yeah tyrell terry tyrell terry i'm sorry yeah he did not stick no 
Uh, yeah, it's just how many guys from the same team. I think that's that's. I'll one tell thing. you name real quick. Name real quick. Justin Lewis, Marquette, sophomore. Take another look at his film. Take another look at his film. Take another look at his film. Really, really impressive athlete. Seven two wingspan. Defenses defensive ceiling is very, very high, and he shot thirty six percent on threes. Good form. Another guy, three and D. Give him to me. All of them. All the three and D wings. Come my way, please. Okay. So As no, no matter the age. No matter the age. Okay. I might draft you at different places, but <laughs> no matter the keep age. that in mind. Um, but all right, that's all we have for y'all today. We hope you all enjoy the video. Um, let us know what you think in the comments below on our of our big boards. Uh, this is kind of just something to get us talking, you know, get to uh, get our big boards out there before we do our mock draft, which will be out tomorrow on Tuesday, I believe. So yeah, check that out whenever that um, is released as well. We appreciate y'all for joining us. Follow us on Twitter right there. Um, and we'll talk to y'all later.